How did you find out? How did you end up coming here? I've been watching your videos for the last three weeks. Just, um, I, res I resonate with what you're saying, what, what is being said uh, through you uh, or by you. Um, I ran across one of your videos easily seven, eight months ago. Um, and I thought you were just a wild, crazy man. Uh, and all I saw was AA and that's, it just turned me off right there. And I've been traveling, I guess, through different people who have, uh, basically been saying the same message and I've come back to you and I can't, the message doesn't, doesn't come through clearly with anybody else anymore. Well, great. I always like to hear the uh, journey <laughs> that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> but uh, welcome, Jay. Yes. Well, thank you, Paul. The, the emphasis of the message hopefully gets through. The message may sound the same, but there's an emphasis that can be different, which is we are more in the direction of negating than affirming, so to speak, yeah? Uh, I, I truly believe to listen to people who have seemingly come before us saying that what we are is indescribable, unknowable, incomprehensible. So let's not attempt to use this faulty, finite system to try to understand the infinite but let's just turn it on trying to understand the finite. Yes? Yes. Maybe we could, by understanding the finite, there'll be a feeling sooner or later that you're looking from the infinite. Yes? And then when you get that feeling or a sense that you're looking from the infinite, it tells you it's, you've always been looking from the infinite. Yes? Always. And then all of the exceptions and and considerations and requirements start falling, yes? Yes. So you align not with more knowledge, but with the fact that you can't even have knowledge of this in a sense, yeah? And it's just an alignment. So uh, it's sort of like we say uh, in recovery, uh, the idea of a higher power, it's always available at all times, right? Where we are with no requirement necessary to meet it, except the ones we've made up. So this is what happens. The ones we have made up without knowing, without knowledge of it, start falling, yes? Yeah. Yeah. And so you realize, hey bro, come on in. You realize, uh... You just realize the absurdity of it all <laughs> in a very nice way. Yeah, and uh, all the huffing and puffing, I understand, you know, but you can be assured it's not going to blow any house down. <laughs> so it's nice. It's a nice message. So, yeah, I, we attempt to. Uh, I remember I was doing a talk in LA and a guy, Kyle, who uh, I used to stay with, and he was, we were at an improvisational theater, so there was a doorway, and so he was sitting there greeting people coming in, you know, looking like, hey, it would be nice if you donated some money, whatever. And uh, so after the meeting, he came up to me and he said, all these people kept stopping by when they were leaving saying, hey, everything this guy said goes over my head. And so he says, what about that? I said, well, that's where we're, that's where we're targeting. Yes, mm -hmm. that's, our, that's our target is to get over your head because basically you and I in a role are seemingly the obstacle, yes? Yes. So this is not about you understanding, it's about an understanding of a you. Yeah? And then maybe the understanding of a you will capture you <laughs> in a much more impersonal light, and then you'll see something without the blinders of extreme personalness, yes? And there's a freedom there. And that freedom doesn't, uh, it compounds itself in a way here in time. Yeah. 
So there's not like more seeing, but they're seeing more. You know, more gets revealed. That, that which is it's revealed in isn't more, but more gets revealed in that, yeah? And uh, you're on to something and you just go along with it over the years. And then it got formulated. I ran into another guy, a guy named Wei Wu Wei, when I was, uh, I was doing talks already and stuff. And I really liked him because he formalized this idea of the negative way or negation. And then his presentation to me was foolproof, really. You just, you gotta, this, hearing this message is a, disarm, a disarming event, not a call to arms, yeah? And it would just work for me. And uh, it hasn't changed since. Yeah? So it became the uh, underlying direction of all the talks, and hopefully there's not much variation from that, yeah? yeah. So thank you for coming, Jay. and. Um, I once sat in, I used to do talks in North Carolina at this group. I don't know how I'd meet these people. So, I mean, I would actually tell them, do you really want me to come? Because I would think I was like completely contrary to the, what they were presenting, but they just kept <laughs> paying my ticket and flying me to North Carolina. So I came up and one of the last ones I did they had a blackboard and I took a magic walk. I say, you don't have to be here <laughs> right now. You know what I mean? Let me save you some time. You know? <laughs> There's still desserts on the buffet, much more. So, so, but they would have me go there. And so I went and uh, at first I would just hang out. They were there for a whole week, these people, for 60, 60 people. That's the limit they could have. And there was a retreat for a whole week. And on the weekends, they bring people, other type of speakers. So I was one of them. So the first few years, I would just pretty much not attend any other speakers' talks, go swimming and stuff, because I don't really want to hear it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> because I like to be a private bakery. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to hear what the franchises are doing with the, coffee bean. I just want to make a nice little brew. <laughs> so, but then I decided, hey, it's probably respectable to go in there. So I sat into one of them and I closed my eyes and then the guy, it wasn't him, you know, but the talk started from the point of non-duality and immediately turned into uh, doing, yeah? And I could see him hanging himself and I sort of felt embarrassed. For my, you know, for the, my poor brother up there, because there was no way he was going to win. Once he stepped in the shit, every, every, you could see the trail. You can't unstep in shit. You got to stop and clean it up. And that pause, which became available, was met with more walking down the trail with the shit. Yeah, and it doesn't get better. It just doesn't. So. The beautiful message here is you don't, uh, you realize there's no correction of an imaginary mistake. Yes. There's no correcting an imaginary mistake. Each step to correct an imaginary mistake reinforces a reality of that mistake. You have to see that, yes? And we're the thing that plays that out. We, we, not like, oh, I saw it from afar. No, you're it, yes? So it's just the whole idea of thinking, uh, you know, getting into the moment. Many, many people did not realize it was predicated on insane belief that you could be out of the moment, yes? They didn't. They thought, oh, yeah, everyone can get out of the moment. Everyone flies off and goes, no, we don't. We never leave. <laughs> we never leave. We are the moment. So, so there was this drive, all right, I'm going to get into the moment. <laughs> and so there's this one guy I heard. I'm not talking about anyone. I'm using a principle. Yeah, But the one guy said, okay, you're going to take – Three times a day, five minutes, you're going to sit in the moment. Yeah? Three times a day. So 
nine o'clock, let's say nine o'clock, four o'clock, eight o'clock, 1 a.m., 2 p.m., yeah, five minutes. Okay, sounds great. Okay, I'm gonna stop, get into the moment, you know, whatever, breathing, something. Usually there's a requirement because obviously there's a belief you're not in the moment. So to get in the moment, there's some requirements have to be fulfilled or the door's locked, yeah? Okay, so what is it? Maybe say something, a prayer or put, light a candle. It's beautiful, really, in a lot of ways. And so, all right, you've entered the moment now. Okay, wow, I'm in the moment. <laughs> it looks just like when, when I was out of the moment. <laughs> Wait a minute, it looks just like when I'm out of the moment, but <laughs> so, okay, so get in the moment, sounds good. Now you get up, but see, the head's reaction is the more important thing to check out. Mm -hmm. The head's reaction is, all right, I'll give you 15 minutes a day being in the moment, but I'm just gonna tear a new one in you for the next 23 hours and 45 minutes, yes? <laughs> you have to see that. So this idea of getting into the moment has already cemented the idea that you could be out of the moment, yes? And, you know, you can maybe change something that you wrote in wet cement. It's going to be more difficult if it dries, yeah? Like your little hand from when you were six years old is still there, yeah? So you want to catch it before it cements. And so this idea of trying to correct an imaginary mistake, it doesn't matter if you catch it at the 50th step and then try to retrace the steps, that's more of the fucking mistake, yeah? The whole point is you've never been out of what you're in, yeah? Because you're not in it, you're of something that you can never be out of. You may believe you're in and out in this little place, but the fact is you're of something, let's say, infinitely never changeable. Always changeable and never changeable, yes? So that knowledge is before you try to acquire knowledge. It's found out. And maybe not through seeking knowledge. Maybe seeking knowledge will fail you and then you find out that you are what you're looking for. I don't mean Paul because Paul, you know, I like the earlier model. It's getting a little <laughs> fucking older now. Yeah, I wasn't looking for an old fucking Toyota. The young Toyota was fine, but, but, but uh, obviously it wasn't that. What's looking is what you're looking for. To be assured of that on a level, it doesn't have to be this level, because this level is binary. This level goes from here to there, connect, disconnect, no, don't know. It's somewhere else, yeah. I don't think it's a location, but let's just say it's somewhere else in the language of locations, yeah? And that knowledge, when it hit me, it was like a knowledge before any knowledge, yeah? This is the ofness. This is, this is uh, downloads from the of into the in, yeah? And there's a point that you arrive at, and hopefully satsang will support that point, which is the point that you never left. So you finally arrive there, and maybe the habit of thinking you can leave and then arrive back will be broken sooner or later, and you'll realize none of the arrivals have, have changed the fact on having never left. Yes. No matter how long you thought you were away and how fast you got arrived back, it doesn't matter, because the whole fact of arriving is on having never left. On having never left is the message. The arriving is not the message. The message is whacked. You get whacked by the message when you seemingly arrive because it tells you on having never left. So I don't know how many more jaunts you're gonna take. I don't know how many tickets you're gonna buy, but there's gonna be a finite number and it's gonna dry up because every time you arrive, it's on having never left. Something's gotta go. <laughs> And it's not the, on having never left, so it's going to be the arrival. And the arrival is obviously based on a belief that you departed somehow. And that's not true. Yeah, I had that event in that uh, 
this thing I did in Australia, this, I don't know what you would call it. It was called the miracle of love. And then the Osho people got it and turned it into the path of love. And now it's because of money. It's like for five days, then it was eight days, eight days. And it was like a emotional, cathartic, uh, event and they knew how to produce cathartic events they did with a lot of talking and music and everything like that so everyone would go through some kind of event crying or screaming or whatever and then they'd have a regroup that night and they talk about it you know? so this one time i had this hit and i started to cry and i'm feeling like the longing of all the ages and i'm saying to myself I can never get back. I can never get back. Oh, you know, the girls were starting to hear me and they were interested in me. Oh, and I'm getting more adoration. Oh, I can never get back. And so they actually pretty much brought me out as the first person. Came out of the fucking cathodic shell. And, and then I realized a week or two later, I can never get back because I never left. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have gone well at that retreat. <laughs> it wouldn't have. <laughs> but I mean, it was, the, it was the answer. Why I can never get back is because I haven't left. Isn't that beautiful? Because the way I, I was understanding, I can never get back. I did something. I fucked up, which is the, the essence of self-centeredness. Mm -hmm. The ens essence of overt, inappropriate responsibility that you have nothing fucking to do with. Yeah, this whole thing, the Course of Miracles, based on the guilt that people believe because they've separated from the Godhead and it never happened. So in this case, this was the point. I, when I said I, I can never get back, there was a whole fucking story of Paul who broke away from it. <laughs> No one would ever do what you've done. It's like the prodigal son, but I would never, you know, it was going to go on and on and on. And this was fueling it. This, the, it was fueling it. My head had a field day with this event. And then a week later, in a not a very exotic setting or anything like that, something downloaded and said, bro, you never left. <laughs> <laughs> the adoration stops completely. <laughs> ah, I want to keep going. I don't want to be there. I want to become something. I don't want to be something. Yeah. In, I do want to be something, and that's in the act of becoming something maybe better. Yeah. But being is not that attractive to the head. It doesn't have, it doesn't hold much interest, really. You can see it. I used to, I've been doing these things for years at this place. And sometimes we had fucking spiritual warriors come in and they had tats and oh, it was they're great. You know, they look fantastic right out of a, like an avatar film. You know? <laughs> so they came in, they sat down, they listened, came back the next week, never saw them again because there was an addiction to experience and this was a dry hole because this is based on a premise that has nothing to do with becoming or unbecoming. It's just seeing. It's using what's available right now to see what's going on. And it informs us that when we think we're looking at what's going on, we're looking from something that's going on. We're not looking from that. We're looking from something that's going on, unbeknownst to us. We're a product of a mental activity, thinking we've been triangulated by a physicality, time, and place. But that's not true. It's just simply not true. So the point is, anything that will be used, which is a lot to reinforce that, needs to be negated. And that's the whole message. This message isn't okay, now that you saw what you're not, turn around and look for what you're There's no turning around. You can't see. <laughs> it's you. You can't, you can't turn around and see you. You'd be the turning around to see you. Yeah? Isn't that beautiful? And sooner or later, sooner or later, 
I do not believe finiteness can outlast infiniteness. I just don't. So you're on the winning side, so to speak. Why not act it? Why not fucking act like you're on the winning side? Yes, yes, yeah. You don't have to stare at things, you gaze at things. Open, panoramic, sees things as they are. They come and go, yeah? They're empty inherently, and we're giving it meaning, all the meaning it has. And what is that a description of? The event of dreaming. Now, we believe we're dreaming, but if you can be perceived, you're the dreamt. This is the dreamt. That which can be perceived cannot be that which is perceiving. What? Yeah. So we have in the event of that which is perceiving, and we think that's the subject, but it's been objectified, which is the duality. Yeah. And so this message is to negate the subjectified and the objectified, and then just see the pure subjectivity. That's, you don't see it, you see from it. Yeah? You can never have an experience of it. Every one of your experiences is, is influenced by it because truly what's quote unquote having the experience isn't this. The experiencer is part of the experience. It's not having the experience. It's actually a main cog of what you call an experience. It's the experiencer. And that's the role of the action figure. Yeah, it's the interface. But what's behind the camera yeah, sees what's in front of the camera, and what's in front of the camera is never going to be behind the camera. So far, suddenly, finally, you see the emperor with no clothes, just like I shared. It was trippy because I lived in a, my mother and I were poor after my father died. All the other, the three other brothers and sisters had moved, and we were living in a small place. And I was in what was her room and had glass doors. And my mother was getting a massage or something, and I saw her her sexual parts like naked, like right. And I was like 11 years old and made a lasting impression. So every time I'd see my mother, I'd have the image of seeing her naked. And same thing when you see this emperor. Who, who constantly puts robes on and the, the robe and cloak of the past and the future fucking robes. You see it with no clothes. You do it. You can't get around it anymore because it, like the, your head is in the tiger's mouth. You've gone too far into non-duality, so to speak. Yeah, it's too late. You can't back out. Yeah, that's sort of like they say in recovery, AA ruined my drinking. Because now I have knowledge of what the whole, what's really going on when I'm drinking, and it's ruined my drinking. So I still want to drink. I don't want to go to AA, but it's fucked because now I know better. And that was the whole point I wanted to avoid by the drinking. I didn't want to know better. So in a sense, you heard the message. I have faith in the message. Yeah. I don't need, I don't believe you need to have faith. Yeah. I don't have faith in you, but I have faith in the message. Yeah. So, uh, anyone else? What is what's going on, Mike? What's going on on Zoom? Yeah, audience here. I have a uh, murderer's row. Yeah. After, yeah. After audience. Yeah, they're all yes, very subdued, but trying to figure it all out. So. <laughs> Understanding is the key. <laughs> I just got to do more. <laughs> uh, you don't sound do subdued. <laughs> You're the winner. Uh, so anyone have an uh, answer yeah. there? Yes. <laughs> Answer. We've, we've, we've got two hands. We'll see if they're answers. John K. and then Sally. Give me a freaking answer. You ready for John? John? John K. first and then Sally. Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, 
Meister Eckhart, again, uh, said, when the soul wishes to experience something, she throws an image of the experience out before her and enters into her own image. Yeah, that, yeah, the, yes, the dreaming get, gets caught as the dreamt, seemingly. Yeah. Yeah, seemingly. See, that's the beautiful thing. Every stage in the dreaming has a back door. They may have a curtain on it, but you can know there's a back door without seeing it. You can know it because you've been there before. So, yes. So, exactly. The dreaming dreams itself into the dreaming and takes itself to be the dreamt, and that's the experience of the dreaming. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And sometimes, because you enter space and time, there's the belief that you've lost your way. And you're going to have to take a, take another way or retrace some steps and stuff like that. But if you ever read uh, the story of the prodigal son in the New Testament, I hope I'm not wrong. I haven't read it in a long time, but the prodigal son, it's an incredible story where the, the person leaves a pretty nice setting for some reason, resentment or something. And he goes off and he starts getting loaded and he starts going downhill and he he thinks about going back to where he was, see his father, but he feels too guilty and shit. So he's now, he comes once again, he comes to in a pigsty and he's fighting the pigs for a cob of corn and suddenly something breaks. And then instead of having the guilt, keeping him from something, he appears on the road. They, there's, no, there's no bridge from the story. He's in the pigsty. He wakes up and then he's on a road and his father's right there, giving him some new clothes, puts a ring on him, says, we're having a huge feast. There's no, oh, so then he pulled himself up from his bootstraps and he did this and he had to hear him. No, it was just had enough, bam. And that all that he was putting off, yeah, was there always available at all times. Beautiful, parable, yes. So this is the thing. That which wants to get it isn't you. That which wants to understand is not you. That which wants to experience it is not you. Yeah. So now, in, that which wants to experience it has been given the meaning to be an obstacle between you and reality, but nonetheless, it ain't. Yeah. So when you see through, I see, to me, non-duality allows understandings to sort of come up that will bring into stark contrast the misunderstandings. And then there's a negating of the, the, the thing that gives all life and meaning to all these understandings is that one. Yeah? So the one gets negated. The one who had the, mis the misunderstanding gets negated. And then the misunderstandings lose power. And the one that says it wants to have the new understanding gets also negated. And the new understandings are, are allowed to do what they do, which is move you from looking for a view to be involved in the vision. Yeah, so now you are what you're looking for. You don't need to have a pair of glasses to read about that. You're seeing from it. And you've always been seeing from it. But now it becomes more ordinary or more normal here yeah and then that's the the basis of traveling lighter i find yeah a, a, a huge shift of interest into the activity of the moment than the activity of the mental state in the past and future yeah and therefore those things of wanting to be in the moment are seen to be completely absurd to you. I'm not saying it's applied to everyone else. Because I'm not, yeah, I can just say what happened with me. A lot of these doors, when they follow, finally opened, they were closed forever. It was over, you know? It was like, I don't waste a second looking for what can't be found. I don't. I'm not trying to get into moment. I think the idea, and I, I uh, apologize for people that are interested in it. I, the idea of using mindfulness when you are a mind, it just blows my mind. It just blows my mind. <laughs> how, 
It just blows my mind. It does. I can't get around that one. You know, it did it. It makes you enemies. I remember I did it. I mentioned it at a talk in Boston years and years ago. The whole place got riled up. Oh, they had a lot of investment. But I said, how more how more mindful can mind be? <laughs> Where are we? That so much extracted from it we're trying to use it to practice yeah. that's mind-boggling to me it is so <laughs> you use the mind in like four different ways just you now it's true it's my mind <laughs> yes so, so yeah anyone anyone have a question here or yeah anyone? oh you, you still got two more hands. you have two more hands here too all right so did you hear that last one all right good and by so, are you suggesting mind boggle instead of mindfulness? <laughs> I don't know why I didn't hear you. You were muted at that moment. I was. Oh, I was uh, Wi Fi. I just, I just <laughs> like the mind boggle as opposed to mindfulness. The mindfulness? The no, mind, mind boggle as opposed to mindfulness. Yes, yes. Mind boggle. Yeah. So, are you ready for Sally? Yes. Hi. Um, something you said just made me realize how I'd, I mean, I fucked everything up and lost all my money and, um, and all of that. But, um, so I went on a mission to find out what was wrong with me and, uh, it didn't work. Right. So it just made me think there was more wrong with me. And there was just something you said earlier that was making me realize that you couldn't possibly find out what was wrong with you. It's a ridiculous project. And I did it for years. And even though I know better. Especially when there's nothing wrong with you. I still do it. <laughs> it's just, and then there's all this stuff like, well, Sally, you should, like a psychologist friend said, Sally, you should really take responsibility for all that you did. It's like, well, I tortured myself over it for years. It didn't do any good. So, um, yeah, but it was something you said earlier on, and I can't remember what it was, but it really... Like it sunk in a level deeper, the insanity of that project of I'm going to fix what's wrong with me. So that's good. Yeah, we used to call it the Urban Renewal Project gets canceled. Yes. Yeah, it's also you saying that it's kind of self indulgent. Oh, me. Oh, I should be doing, I should have done so. It's completely self indulgent. <laughs> <laughs> so that works. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it, uh, they allow it to enter to nicer restaurants. It's the same. Yeah. yeah, the whole thing of at any moment, you could see the one event in a lot of different ways. So when you see one person and they're being very selfless, it may be beautiful and there's humility. And yet in that person's head, they may be, be completely identified as the servant. Yes. So basically, it doesn't make any uh, difference to the guy who needs a sandwich. The guy doesn't, he doesn't care if your intentions are good or not. They, he wants to eat something. But there you are obsessed with yourself. I can't serve anymore. I see it as not being helpful. Yes, it's helpful. Give me that sandwich. <laughs> Just give me the sandwich. Then you can go to the psychiatrist later. <laughs> so you see, you got to see the head's action or reaction to life is mechanical. It is not your response. It's a mechanical reaction. So the mental state reacts to whatever it's brought into contact with through us. We are the one who's engaged. Really. The mental state arises and claims it. And if you see it's, it's sort of like, almost like a, a, an adhesive surface looking for something to bind onto. So now people identify with the hometown team. People identify with the cars they drive. <gasps> There's another Volkswagen bus or, you know, <laughs> van wagon or Wisteria or 50 Chevy trucks. Oh yeah, we're constantly, there's an identifying constantly with everything. Or I'm a satsanger or I'm a non-duality person. This doesn't have to stop at all because 
Your attempt to stop it is part of it, yes? Yeah. What moves you to do something about it is the something you want to do something about. Yeah. This is seeing it from awareness. Yeah. You can't see anything from anywhere else, really. But I'm not talking about eyes. I'm talking about seeing it. You see it. Yeah. And then you see the futility of trying to get out of this idea of self as self. It's just freaking super clear. I mean, and some of these things, they're clear and then they're unclear. No, there are certain things that are clear and that's it. You hit a point where there's a being convinced and it's a, do, it's a new day. You see something and it's over. You've, had a, you've seen it enough and then there was a recognition. And then that which was causing futility. Why isn't this happening? There's a hallelujah to it. And I've never seen it change back, ever. Never. In, my, in this life, when I've come to that point from hearing satsang, I knew I was never going to ask another question. I never asked another question from there. I knew that, hey, I'm never getting this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still going to India. I'm still sitting here. I might as well enjoy it because I, here I am. And I'm here with the idea of getting something. And I'm super clear I'm never going to get anything. That never got clouded again. It's, it's clouded with like going to a store where I saw they advertise something. And I go to the store and it's not there. I still think I'm looking for it still. I'm not coming to the conclusion it's not here. But I'm talking about dynamics of or platforms of being convinced where I have never really ever tried to get into a moment since this talk, since he's talked ever. I've seen it. I've seen the head doesn't even try anymore. It doesn't. It has a, it has its, its field has shrunk unbelievably. Its field was like you could play 20 different sports on that field. Now it's basically the same old, same old. Very, it's got a very small loop. It goes over and a lot's forbidden to it. It doesn't go there. It doesn't. It doesn't go into mental, spiritual machinations. None, 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 zero. It's awesome. Like, I'm so dumbed down when it comes to like, spiritual mind candy when oh the 11th dimension i've reached the event horizon and then if oh wait you know i could care less it's cool i could care less i have no interest in it i have no interest in spiritual progress i know now you can have progress that's fine i'm interested in that but i have an ability to entertain and be happy with enough Yes, but the idea of I'm advancing on some mission to to a greater mission, I don't see that at all. I don't. Yeah, I think you're as easily forgotten right here as you are by other people. <laughs> <laughs> Just as you can forget other people like that, I'm believing you'll be forgotten like that. <laughs> don't <laughs> we held a vigil for a week. <laughs> we figured we could use that space in a better way. That's that's my oh. practice. Ask everybody to forget you. <laughs> uh, uh, that's not hard. Yeah. They've already started from there, yeah. so that's the perfect non-dual hearing. Yes, you you're asking them to do what they've already. Never done. They've completely <laughs> lost interest in you. Unless it regards them. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to lose interest in me. You got it. <laughs> because I didn't have it. This is the beauty of the message, really. <laughs> uh, I found this out early. We used to make used to use a an example of I was interested in this girl who I hadn't met yet. And I was having hopes that, you know, she'd have children with me and everything else like that. And so she's at the same building holding a, another type of meeting. And I'm quite interested in listening to what she's saying, 
with the hopes that she's going to say something nice about me, you know? Mm -hmm. Then I'll have the balls to come up to her and go, hey, you want to have a coffee? Like the bet would be hedged already. So I'm listening and people are noticing I'm not seemingly here at the talk and they go, Paul, you know, be here now or something. I say, yeah, yeah, I great. I love that principle, but my head is in there because this means a whole lot more than this going to the head. And then finally, someone comes and brings me a book and the book is How to Lose Interest in a Conversation in Another Room. Like page through it. Yeah, the principles are great. And then, but this herd of cats isn't listening to me. They're waiting for the, oh, Paul, I like that guy, you know? And then suddenly I finally hear her and she says, I like that guy, Matt, and my name is Paul. Do I have to send like a Navy SEAL 16 to get the attention and interest? No, it gets withdrawn immediately out of, through the wall, out of that room. Yeah. And I don't think it's gonna go anywhere else. It definitely has to touch home base for a second before it goes on, you know, you've got to notice it's here, yeah. And then maybe it seems to go, but after a while, all the goings get uh, trumped by the here. And then, so there's like, okay, it's going, and then it's here, and then going. And after a while, here, and then it's here going. Here, and, but the, now you don't lose the here by the going, yes? Where before, the going implied you'd left here. It doesn't, it was just going. So the going, going, but you're here, right? And then all the, all, the, all the skillful means to deal with going aren't needed because you're here. With the going, it's like the going didn't stop, but something happened. You didn't give the meaning to the going to have the ability to cause you not to be here. Yes, that's all that gets lost. And hopefully I believe satsang can bring this about. because it's sound. I heard this and it became the last answer over time. And I've had a lot of time after I heard this message. And to me, a last answer in time takes the need away to have any other answers concerning this topic, which is incredible, yeah? And then your life is based on a sense, not of Paul, but Paul was a name given to the sense of I am. It was always, always was, is, and will be I am. Even though the head uses it to catapult the idea of Paul. Yeah? And you see it. To try to convince that which catapults the idea of Paul that it's the I am, I see as pointless. I do. I just see it. Do its thing, and I don't feel volition concerning it or choice or anything. Yeah, to see it. And now its activity doesn't obscure that which isn't an activity. The being does not obs get obscured by the doing. The doing can go on and the being is already available, always available. Yeah, where before my head had a requirement, these doings have to stop for me to be. That's bullshit. So that's what you lose. You don't gain ways of stopping something that's not gonna stop. You lose interest in stopping shit that's not gonna stop. And now the meaning that was given to those things to stop something else that is impossible to stop is broken through. And now the being is readily available at all times right where you are. And no matter what opinion it has, it doesn't fucking matter. It's just a stubborn is, yeah? That doesn't get moved by all the moving. It doesn't get going by all the going. It doesn't show up by all the arriving. It's just here, always available at all times. Let it sink in. I mean, it's readily there. I mean, it doesn't take much for the fish to realize it's in water. It's in water. <laughs> it's not like a huge leap of faith. It's just you know, clearing something up so that it, the obvious can become influential here. And to me, the obvious of what, of what you are can be extremely influential, and that influence is captured by traveling lighter. So that which you're not travels lighter, yeah, in this world of experiences and 
volatility and conditions and physical illnesses and then not getting better and wah da ba da da ba 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 all of that stuff is do what it's do, render unto Caesar's what is Caesar's, but you're not a Roman. You're of something else. And that is the unspoken knowledge that's readily available. It's as loud as loud can be, literally. When you stop, it doesn't start. It's always on. It doesn't coincide. Oh, it's only going to start when you stop. No. It's on all the time. You can stop. And maybe it'll be more apparent, but it doesn't mean you just brought it into life. It's the existence of everything. Yeah. So me stopping doesn't start it. That's what you need to get, because if it again, if you don't, you're going to be relying on what you're not. There's going to be a huge fucking requirement and it's going to add inches to it. You see, if you give it an inch, it'll take a mile. Well, if you let it foot in the door, it's going to fucking invite itself in. It's what it does. So you see it. Yeah. You see when it's acting like the master, but you were there before it. You're the resident of the house. Even though it says it owns the house, you saw it coming. You were already here. Yeah. And there's nothing. We used to do that gunslinger thing. I believe the sense of self is a mental process. Yeah. The idea is of the mentalness, and then it's reinforced by the mental processes. Yes, that sense of self. I believe a mental process takes time. It needs time. Yeah. So there is a period of time that has to happen for you to come up with you. Yeah. So I don't believe there's any process here that will outprocess that. I just don't. It's very fast, like a second or so. So if I'm getting, if I'm going on a meditation retreat, while I'm moving my ass down to the pillow, the head has already cast me as the meditator. Yeah, it's cast me as the meditator. So that which you would see could be freeing and bring peace is also gonna reinforce bondage because the mental states claimed it. It doesn't matter if it's in a temple. It doesn't have any respect for anything like that. Wherever you are, it's going to arise and claim what's happening. There's no forbidden grounds. Yeah. So here it goes. So what we would say is the only thing that can beat that could not be in time, which is what our being is. Yeah? So our being can never lose this gunfight because it's guns always out. The mental process takes time. Even though it can beat everyone else, it can't beat this. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. And the point is, you're not trying to fight a delusion or, or let's say, uh, false evidence. Yeah. You're not trying to fight false evidence with false evidence. You're fighting with it as a fact. The fact of what you are brings about the seeing of the false evidence of what you're not and what reinforces it and constantly, constantly, constantly obsesses over its material. Yes, this or that. You see it, you see the false evidence, not from false evidence. You see it from a fact. So the false evidence does not appear real for you anymore because something that is real is not appearing. Yeah. So there you go. Yes. I don't know who I was speaking to, <laughs> but uh, all of us. Yeah, anyone else? Yep, uh, we got Philip uh, from Brisbane Down Under. Philip, uh, thank you for that clarification. So thinking it was Brisbane <laughs> down in uh, San Mateo. Right? <laughs> right. I don't want to hear from Philip from Brisbane. <laughs> I owe him money. All right, it's from us. <laughs> Hey, all you North Americans. Oh, no, I can't hear you. Yeah, all Philip's right. volume's a little lower. How does that, how do you say that from my island? You, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh, I can. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah. Beauty, mate. Um, hi, Paul. How are you? 
Good. Hey, yeah. Um, hi, everyone else. It's so, so great to be here. I, I haven't been here for quite a while. <clears throat> I think probably you've just, you've probably just answered my. Yeah, we want to report about what you've been doing, Philip. <laughs> I wanted to, uh, in paragraph form, send it to Mike. Um, I think you've, you've probably answered most of what I, I sort of wanted to talk about just just re, just then, but it um I've um I've come this, this realization about the reliance on Phil. To the deliver, reliance on Phil. Yeah, you know, to deliver the freedom and and the kind of the the relief from all the pain. Does it work? It's um. Well, well, not really. No, no. It's um. <laughs> so hold on. Wait a minute. I want to give a flash to everyone here. Uh, reliance on Phil hasn't worked. <laughs> reliance on Phil is no different than reliance on Tommy or reliance on Paul or reliance on Nick. It didn't work. No. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We needed that. <laughs> What's really amped up is is the policeman, you know, in the head. And oh, and yes. It, when it, whenever you satisfy one policeman, there's there's another one behind it, you know, telling you about not getting upset in traffic and all this sort of. Oh, stuff. it's going to stop, Phil. There isn't that many behind it. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the You'll same see one. the cop is wearing the same human uniform it had last time. Yeah. You will. I think, I think, um, I can't hear yeah, just, just this reliance on, 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 on outcomes, you know, and, um, including all, all, the, all the great spiritual outcomes like meditation and, um, and good mindfulness, you know, and, um, it, it, it kind of like, it just hasn't delivered what it's supposed to deliver, you know, in terms of the peace and the, and so the what does that tell you? And and um, I, I just realised that just that shift in emphasis, that shift in in the status, is, is what kind of gives you has given me that kind of relief. That kind of that no matter what, no matter what happens, no matter what Phil is going through. In fact, even when in, in the deepest sort of traffic and pain, that it's kind of like that's when I see it clearer, rather than sort of in in a kind of a, a conditional meditative kind of peace or relative peace and and it's it's not like a like i've given up on phil it's just that phil um just doesn't hasn't delivered you know he hasn't kind of he hasn't well yeah it. so now maybe the appropriate response would be a giving up on phil i think that's very telling you haven't given up on phil but phil hasn't uh delivered so obviously phil has revealed he can't deliver the goods. Uh, what's your re response? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, one response is despair, in, in one sense, and the other response is, well, maybe that, maybe that's that that's the kind of freedom in in that in that um, relinquishment of 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 that expectation, that kind of um, reliance. You know that that. Um, no, bro. No, though. I'm going to tell you something. The freedom is available with that going on or not. Yeah. yeah. That's just a requirement that the fill is setting up. Yeah. So now the fill, to reinforce its own relevance, is saying, well, if I don't move, you're not going to see anything. Bullshit. You're seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. The head is not at the seeing level. The head is at the seen level. The head doesn't work behind any scenes. It's not there. It's, uh, it's, it's, it comes after and it implies it was before. Yeah. So this is Phil trying to, you know, refill Phil. <laughs> yeah. So the Phil has shown that it's empty and now Phil is refilling Phil to keep going. That's great to see, bro. Yeah. Yeah, and if you need to do something, do it. You know, if you feel like 
I can't have any peace unless I have a few minutes of meditation, then get a fucking, you know, set up a few minutes of meditation because at that point, something's playing God and you better play by its rules at that point. Yeah. Mm. And then hopefully you'll realize once it says one need is met, it's going to come up with other needs. I've got a, I need and on and on and on and on. And so hopefully, see, Phil hasn't arrived there, but the system has revealed it's failed. Fa Phil as a delivery system has failed. You even said it. You're just not ready to give up on Phil. Now, I would say that which is not ready to give up on Phil is part of the system of Phil. Yeah. And if you're waiting for it to come to the conclusion, I'm going to give up on Phil, it can't because it's going to be Phil in some way. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and then just come to satsang and you'll hear this. Yeah. And then it'll, one time the penny's going to drop. And if it needs to drop, a lot of times it will do that. If it needs, but usually the other drops are built on the one drop. They're almost like echoes of that one whack. And that one whack is what needs to be tickled. It doesn't need more wax. That's the living ember of the message. You just tickle it, yes? Yeah. I don't think you need to, you, you're in the business of finding the ember. The ember is on, yeah? Yeah. Maybe this is the real spiritual path, which is no path at all. Maybe you've gone through enough paths to realize there's, there's not a path. There you go. Yeah. But I don't know. I can't see. Sometimes I, I joke around because I haven't felt that bad in a while, like heavily bad. And if you're not feeling it, you can parody it and joke about it. Because I don't know. I know when I see people, uh, they're not taking my jokes well because <laughs> they're really feeling terrible. Yeah. You know, or heavy. But I wouldn't say terrible, heavy. And I had, can't do that justice right now because I haven't felt heavy in a while, long time. Yeah. yeah. And But I do know... I've had experience, you know, I've been, I've observed heavy and light, and I know the principle is the same for both. Mm. Yeah. They're both uh, either the not knowing something or the knowing of something. So the knowing you're not that is what brings about a lightness. A not knowing you're not that is the heaviness. Yeah. So. On a principle level, I always try, I work there usually. I don't, because once it gets onto the circumstantial level, you know, that's where you need pails of water and stuff. You need to have uh, ways of inciting a, a quick sense of relief because the house is burning. But after a while, I'd, I'd much rather, you know, see my role as the fire starter Remember that old argument they used to have, what would it be better, teaching a person how to fish or to give them one fish? Yeah, you know what I mean? I'd say I do both. You give them a fish now, and then you buy some YouTube videos of how to learn how to fish. And then you keep giving them a fish until they do, and then they don't need to, the fish can go to somewhere else, yeah? So to me on the principle level, it's much more influential and, and, uh, and time doesn't play a huge role in it. You can get something that seemed to be very heavy for a long time like that, and lightness ensues, yeah? So I much rather, I always like to be in the blueprint room, not, not after the house was built and now you're bitching about the mortgage and how am I gonna get out of all these responsibilities? Yeah, if you could see it, on a principle level, I think there's other possibilities are available. Yeah. So, without changing the circumstance, you say, just just within the same position. Well, I've lost you there, but. Uh... Well, I, I mean, I'm always trying to improve my my position. You know, I'm always trying to improve my. I've, my life you know make make things better you know but 
Yeah. And ultimately, it, it doesn't seem to make any difference, you know, because it, Well, there you go. And it, this is what will bring some relief, not changing that, but seeing it's not you that's doing it. Yeah, it's not you that wants to keep changing its life, even though it hasn't made any difference. Because the you will have a field day with that. It will. It will, it will grow more appendages shit like that with that info. You want to starve it. And where the starvation point is, is not doing something different, but seeing you're not the doer. To me, that's where it's starved. Seriously. Yeah. You can try new diets and shit. I don't feel ultimately, if you see you're not the doer, you can have relief when it's busily doing its thing. It's not like that has to stop for me to be okay. That whole dynamic doesn't hold anymore. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah. lot of shit can be happening and you're still okay. Isn't that really what happens? It isn't like everything gets great. It's it. You travel lighter through it, no matter what it's like. Because the meaning it used to be given has changed. Yeah? You're not taking it so seriously. I don't know how you can act yourself into that. I think you can find yourself there. I don't think you can act yourself there. Yeah? So, yeah. What I do the last few years is I pray. If I have a desire that just seemingly won't go away, I just pray, pray it out. There you go. You so know, someone and, prays, yes. Yeah, I just pray it out and then let something else take care of it because it's not going to get done in any other way. And maybe not even that way, but at least that way it's been let go of in a, in a way that works for me. Not yes, yeah, so, so you know, skillful means yeah. are good. And then to me, the, the greatest use of a skillful means is not to use it, really. That's what I'm really into. <laughs> Seriously. I like the traveling lighter, uh, don't have a pocket knife or anything like that, just sort of travel lighter. And then I have a lot of faith in this message. That's all I can say, yeah. a lot of faith. I, I think it will outlast skillful means and everything else. Because the skillful means can also be a field of identification and shit like that. There is no field of identification seeing what you're not. There's nothing. It's totally disarming. You don't do fucking anything. You just say, yeah, truth be told. And that's what it is. Truth is being told. Yeah, you're there and see what happens. Yeah, I have faith in it. That's why we're here. If I what, didn't have faith in it, I would probably be uh, sharing skillful means. Because if that was the only thing we could do is keep bailing out the boat, then you'd need a lot of pails and how to quickly do it as fast as possible. Right. But I believe there's something prior to all this. It's interesting, isn't it? That extracts the reality from it, yes. You, yeah. you can't act this, you can't make this happen. It's like, you, you know, I went through um, a, a um, a speed camera and you know obviously a 200 by 200 fine and i get angry about it and, and the policeman says man it's not you it's 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 just phil getting up the fine you know don't, don't worry about it and then you realize that's the policeman trying to kind of non-dual the event rather than than seeing it for what it is you know but you saw that so there you go yeah you saw that a couple of years ago you wouldn't have even seen that no yeah yeah. That's what keep falling back into the scene. You don't have to get into a deep, a deep description of this, what you saw, have the sense of the seeing of it. That's the, if you want to have a memory, have a sense felt memory of seeing it all. Yeah, because I hear a lot of people give incredibly clear descriptions of why they're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Obviously, that light isn't getting uh, shadowed or darker. Yeah, it's seeing very clearly, and you're describing the policeman very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but again, the policeman's sitting here. You're thinking it's the policeman that's feeling, you know, the inadequacies of the policeman. Yeah, you're neither of those. Mm -hmm. This is the message. 
When someone sh- stands up and says it's you, you're, it's not. You can see it. And there isn't a lot of them. There is not a lot of them. If you see the, the combo, it's not going to do that many times. If you only see one, then it will keep. Yeah, but if you see both of them, you may see one for a few more times, but then it's you lose interest in it. And then because the interest that you think it has, that's in it is that it has the ability to obstruct or to affect you. And you and I have given it way too much fucking influence. It doesn't. You can be at peace with chaotic head going. Because you are at peace with What's (laughs) allowing all this shit to happen? Isn't the shit that's happening. What's allowing everything to happen isn't of the nature of what's happening. It's something other than it. Absolutely. And we're from there. And you can feel like you're from there. Yeah. You can realize you don't have a biography of the of. You have a biography of the in. You have a story of the in. You have a history of the in. You have a future of the in. But the of is the ever present. And I feel incredibly influential. Yeah. So, yeah. Phil, I think what you're sharing, it's right there. You've already described, you've seen it. And uh, what's speaking is sort of like the tail of the dog. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. I, I owe so much to you. Your um, in, in, yeah, just brilliant. The thing is, when you see it, after a while, it's going to bring relief and joy. It's not going to bring more consternation and trying to understand more. That's going to run out. And then it's going to bring relief and joy. Yeah, you're going to lose interest in the policeman figuring out the crime. You will. I swear. I, because I, I, I've, seen, I've watched it in my own theater, and I've seen it in others. Now, I've seen people at these Zooms have their whole facial structure change mm. because that wanting to catch the policeman finally fucking dropped. Yeah. And they're the better for it. Yes. Uninterest doesn't mean a lack of peace. It can be an incredible uh, accomplice to peace. Yeah. There's a loss of interest in self. That's the main movement of, in the world of recovery. We lose interest in self. And then all this shit follows. You, you learn that you can contribute to life. You look at how you can be available to others. All this stuff comes from us. One simple movement, which is not you getting clearer. No, losing interest in self. That's, that's the pivot point. Yeah, And to me, non-duality is telling us you're not it. And at a deep level, the way you can possibly be free is from it, not as it. You finally see you're not it. And there's a loss of interest in it. And that's all, that's the bomb, the BAL bomb. And it can apply it itself. It's concocting a bomb is more self trying to get out of self, yes? There's a loss of interest because non-duality has told you, inferred it to you by Ramana, being ourselves reality. Yes. The seeker is the source. Yes. What's looking is what you're looking for. When is this available? Now, where, here? Yeah. The here and now overrides everything, everything. Whenever you walk into the past, the here and now is there. When you walk into the future, the here and now is there. You're trying to make the here and now, you're trying to make the future the here and now through the fucking thought system. You are not, the head is. And it's trying to make the past the here and now through the thought system by constantly visiting and going over shit. Yes, it can't do it. It needs the audience to buy it. It needs us, yeah. 
we're like the independent. Yeah? We haven't given our vote either way. Yeah. I'm telling you, loss of interest goes a long way. It does. Yeah. The gain of interest is end up no way. <laughs> we just said, Philip, Philip just shared it. Oh, yeah. I, we eye on Philip to do something, it's failed. <laughs> okay. Now, ding, move on. <laughs> you just, it's just revealed to you. It's, it's failedness, you know, but why? You don't have to go to the why. Just recognize it's failed, and then something's going to move. There'll be a migration of interest away from relying on Phil, and now you're going to see life from new points of views, and maybe it'll fit you better. And then you won't even know when it, the big transfer occurred because you have lost interest in the big transfer. Yeah, that's the sign of the big transfer. Is you don't have it noted in your calendar. This is the day you know, every no. Just fucking you lost interest in the day that changed everything. <laughs> yeah. So hey, thank you everyone. I gotta go back to the asylum soon. <laughs> I can smell the jello. It's one of those memory smells. Strawberry, two day old, jello, associated, combined with some screaming down all number four. We got some, we got some new patients in, yelling, and, yeah, speaking in tongues. So, hey, anyone else, Mike? Uh, anybody else? No, no hands. I don't see any hands. Hey, I want to show everyone. I want to show Mike. We've had a huge upgrade. Let me show you something. Chrome. Oh, chrome. We got a chrome uh, garbage can now. Oh, nice. Oops. You must be in Berlin. And now it's how we do service is we, we polish it every week. Uh, <laughs> what about the signs above it? What? Are the signs still above it? The trash and the recycling? Oh, no, no, no. It's, they've upgraded. It's, up, it's right on it now, the sign. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it, only took, it only took 15 years. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Everyone's just waiting for the the head of Zen Bislap to disappear. And then they're gonna really upgrade the whole system. Yeah. They'll have 20 people speaking all around. It'd be like a franchise. Zen Bislap shirts oh. everywhere. Who is the founder? I don't know. It's a fucking crazy character. We <laughs> forgot him in about a week. Yeah. Good job, Paul. <laughs> Zen Bitslap College. I didn't even finish high school. Yeah, no, university, university. I didn't finish high school. <laughs> All right, hey, anyone? We're having a lot of fun. I think we want to go to coffee. So oh, yeah. Pure projection. Oh. <laughs> oh, you got one. Esteban. Oh. Who is it? Esteban. 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 Oh, Esteban. Yes. Esteban. Esteban. <laughs> Where's Deborah? Deborah and Esteban. Esteban, you would have missed dinner if your mother called you with that name. Esteban, come to lunch. Esteban. Right. Yeah, well, almost 60 years that she, she called me like that, Esteban. Oh, yeah? Oh, God. I know. That's my a real one. I just like to screw with him. After he Esteban, he's okay. my balloon about the hundred monkey phenomena. I have no problem. You can you can, you can call them the cell phone as you want. <laughs> All right, that's I just I just wanted to share. You wanted to share it, and he's in the same line of uh, feeling. Um, for decades, my selfie got me into the policeman. 
and uh, it was based on a lot of guilt and shame. The policeman judging uh, the thief for, for not doing good enough and being in a continuous improvement program for decades. This thing yeah. about the policeman is, is, is really bad, I can say. And uh, with, um, I don't know, maybe less than six months listening to your message, I realized today that my self-improvement program is uh, fading away. It's, and I, I'm not doing anything. It's just, uh, um, how can I improve a non-existent thing? So it's, it's just fading, like, like disappearing and, and moving to a different, I don't know, to the other room. And the, the big S self or the, our true nature is, is more like, I'm, I'm feeling like he's, um, he's manifesting through the action figure somehow. And also I'm, I'm conscious now that the, my true nature cannot be improved. Yes. Thank you, Paul. That was it. I said it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Esteban. I don't want you to share this with the other people. No, I won't. I won't. Anyway. <laughs> it could ruin my career. <laughs> <laughs> or prove my uh, incredible success. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Esteban. Yeah, very nice. Yes, it is. It is a success. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I know. Yeah, it's, it's, I know. it's nice. It is. That's why I, I, yeah. I, I hope it will be. No, it is. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Esteban. Thank yeah. you, thank you, all. Up on. thank you, everyone. Yeah. Yes, and I want to thank you all, all other here in the in the group because their shares uh, are very important, and I I want to say it this way because when people are sharing, you you're you're also listening the message, and you correct little nuances here and there, and but it's is very uh, I don't know very informative. I want yes. to thank the other people that are in the group. Thank you. Well, you know, Esteban, hopefully you're going to have the chance to be with some of us live because uh, a lot of us, like Vlad and other people, to me, speak loudly by not saying anything. Very nice. So Good. it was a really nice, uh, when we, I met with a lot of people in Italy and it was very, uh, yeah, the, they were of course usually the people that are carrying it don't know they're carrying it but they were carrying a lot of large space open nice space so yes we had mia and all these people there and very um left a very last probably super long lasting impression yeah I can't put more words on it, but they know the ones that were there know what I'm talking about. Vlad and everyone else. Yes, yes, yes. So. All right, well, let's say goodbye. Uh, yeah, actually, I want the baskets passed four times around. <laughs> People, are, they're always coughing or something the first time. Oh, oh wait a minute. No. <laughs> I know. All right, so. Uh, Mike, thank you again. Mike was one of those in Italy. Yes. Yeah. See, see, these Zoom squares don't do it justice. These little squares that Vlad and Mike and me are appearing on the live version. Uh, yeah. They're all frameless. It's sort of good. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to have Mike contained, and so would uh, the lifeguards in Italy and shit. He was always. <laughs> Far out or die for <laughs> or something. Amelia had to apologize for him tons of times in Italy, in, in, in Italian, but it's okay. Bill Churchman, Bill and Kathleen, very, very nice to see both you. I've had the pleasure to meet those two. Sally Underwood, nice to meet you again. I hope I see you soon. Come back if you like. We got Jay.
Yes, Jay, now that you've, uh, yeah. Nice to have you. Yes, yeah. Marty, I think I know who that one is today. I'll just say hello. Philip, nice to see you, bro. Check in a little more often, Phil. Yeah. Yeah, I want to I wanna limit the amount of uh, uh, heat you have in the chain. We want to keep them closer to Zen Bitch Slap. Yeah. It's still All right. Ready if you come down to Oz, too. I will be coming to Oz sooner or later, for sure. Yeah. We'll let you know, Phil. We'll probably be going to uh, Melbourne and then from there to uh, Byron Bay and stuff. All right. All right, so we've got uh, Philip, and I mean it, we'll be over there. Yeah, I, I have a connection with Australia. Mia, Steve, San Diego, Jack. Come on down. Esteban, well, we'll be in uh, Palm Springs next weekend. And the meeting, will be, the meeting will be open, I think. It's gonna be one o'clock. We'll be doing a Zoom, but we're going to do a live meeting uh, in Palm Springs. Is if it you on want, the yeah, Steve, uh, can you see Mia? Can you give him uh, some information? Mia will let you know, Steve. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Steve, I'm yeah. sending you a message directly. Okay. And, and okay. I'll send my number and we can oh. chat. Thanks. Yeah, so okay. we'll have Thank a, a talk, a live, and a Zoom next week. We'll be in Palm Springs. Yeah. All right, great. Well, let's look at the others. Sherry, I'm hoping to meet Sherry too. That'd be nice, very nice. John, as always, Alan O, uh, a, a great supporter of Zen Bitch Lab. Beth H, yes. You know, so if some things aren't gonna change, it's a great when there's a loss of interest in changing it, yes? We got Alan. Nice to see you, Alan. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Esther. Yes. Frank in Tucson. There he is. Nice to see you, Frank. Johannes. We got Grateful Dave. He's got his little uh, Australian sheepdog or something. Chris G. He's left the little door. There he is. Lisa, I'll be seeing Lisa in Palm Springs. I must be the dog. Uh, he had it right there, but moved it. Uh, let's see, we got Susan K, we got Michael C, Oliver from Berlin, Zoe, Arkansas, John, Tariq from Dover, Angie, Angie from uh, Ontario. She's smiling, very nice to see you, Angie. Angie, very, very nice. I'm very happy I met you. And, Yes, yeah. We got Nico. Nice, uh, nice character. Nico, all's well? Yes, good. Next time we're in Italy, we're going to have to come over there and check you out. Yes? Sure, sure. We will plan something for next summer. Yeah, we'll see. Welcome tour. Zen Beach in September. I think we'll be there in September again. Okay, it's still summer, yeah. All right, yep. Yeah. All right, we got Miranda. Uh, 